In today's video, we're going to be going over a feature that just came out last week with Crew AI called Flows. It's going to simplify the flow creation, give us more flexibility, and it has state management where we can share state between different tasks. And then with just one line of code, we can plot how the flow looks. We're going to go over the documentation and the code that's going to be added on to the news aggregator from last video. If you haven't watched it, there's a link in the description and I have the code in the description as well. Like I mentioned, this is a new feature to Crew AI called Flows. And it's a powerful feature designed to streamline the creation and management of AI workflows. Okay, and like I said, I integrated the code for this into the project we're already working on uh, with this series, but it does simplify the workflow creation and it does have state management so you can share the state between different tasks. All right, so let's look at this example really quick. And there, there's gonna be some new stuff here, right? This, this is brand new. So let me try and go through this with you and then we'll see the code. But you're gonna first create a class, doesn't matter whatever you name it, but you're gonna pass in this flow class, right? This is, this is a new import called flow. And there's also some decorators. There's a one called at start and there's one called at listen. Okay, so the whole flow that you're gonna be using, it, you'll use the at start to you know start your flow, right? So the first one has a function called generate city. This is just a simple open AI call. And all this is doing is saying return the name of a random city in the world. Okay, so this function is gonna start the whole flow Kind of like how you would kick off a crew, like if you just had one crew, but this time it's going to start off a flow and you can have multiple crew, multiple crews in this flow. So this function will generate a city. Okay. Let's just, let's just say it generates Las Vegas. Okay. Then there's an at listen decorator. And what this is doing is saying, okay, once the output is generated from this function called generate city. So up here, generate city. Once the open AI gives us a random city and returns that, this function generate fun fact is listening for that output from generate city. So once that is done, it's going to take in this random city. We have another open AI call and it's just going to say, tell me a fun fact about whatever that city is. So tell me a fun fact about Las Vegas. Okay. Then we have this main function here where we say flow is equal to example flow. Example flow is the class that this created. You know, it's called flow.kickoff, which is very similar to what, you know, you see when you crew, you create the crew, then you also kick off the crew. And then it just prints out that result. And there's more documentation that you can see about what at start and at listen does is kind of what I just said, goes through some of the examples. And just like you can, just like you killed with a crew, you can get the output. So here we have another output example or another uh, flow example. So we have the at start method. So whenever you kick off the crew here, you're going to say flow equals output example flow. This is creating or instantiating the class. Then we're going to kick off the class. We're going to have this output and you can just print the output just like you would anything else. But something that is going to be powerful that I, well, I believe is going to be powerful is this accessing and updating state. Okay. This is a little different, right? There's actually a couple different ways to do this, but I'm not going to go over everything here because it is a lot, but I just want to go over the things that we're going to be using in our code. And one of the things I am going to show you is how to access and update state. Okay. Basically how this works is we have another, we have another example of code here. So we have, uh, in what we have different here is we have a separate class. This is just a, a pedantic class. So we have a counter that's an int and a message that is string, right? So we just have this class that have default zero and default empty string. Then we created a flow class. Well, the difference is instead of just passing in the flow class, you're going to in, in these brackets, you're going to pass in this uh, example state, which is just a pedantic class. And what this means is whenever we again, start the flow with this first method, we're going to say self dot state message is equal to hello from the first hello from the first method. So the message string here, and then the counter, we're going to increment it by one here. So we're updating this state. So the state is this class and it's going to be passed in through this whole flow for any functions that we have in here, we can access it. Then the second method we're it's, it's saying, you know, we're, we're adding on updated by the second method here, and we're incrementing the counter by one as well. Then it's returning the self dot state message. So again, here in the, in the main workflow, we're kicking it off. We're just getting the output from the, from the final, from the, the whole flow. And then the print is this final state. So we print out the whole flow dot state. And what that looks like is if we go to the output here, the final output is hello from the first method updated by the second method. And then it print out the final state, which was both of the parameters from the, from the pedantic class. So the counter and the message. 
So at the end here, where we get the final state and we're printing flow.state, it's gonna print out counter two because we incremented by two and then print it out the full message. And there's two more things I wanna show you real quick because we're gonna be using one of these uh, towards for the end of the flow is they have flow control, which is conditional logic. You can have it, either have or, or you can have and here. So let me go over the and because that's what we're gonna be using. And what this means, so we go to the code here uh, for the and, so let's scroll down here. So we have this example workflow where the start, you can have, this is another thing I wanna mention, you can have multiple listens, right? This is how you can kind of, uh, you can either sequentially or asynchronously have these methods. So we have this start method here where it updates state. And this is something, I know this looks a little different. I just mentioned that it had a pedantic class. This is actually called unstructured state. Don't worry about this right now as much, um, but we have this at listen method. So it waits till the start method returns the output or finishes whatever it's doing. Then it's going to add uh, another property to the to the state for this flow. And then we have this at listen that says and underscore. What that means is this, this logger is only going to print out once the start method and the second method have returned an output or a finish the or finish the logic within their functions. Okay, that's the only way this is going to print out the logger and then the state. If this was or then it would say either start method or the second method has completed, then execute this function. So if we go to the output here, the logger is going to print out hello from the start method. And what do computers eat microchips? So it prints, prints out the full state. And that's only because both of the start method and the second method completed. And then finally, at the end of the whole flow, I'm gonna show you how to plot it. And it gives us an HTML page where we can see how our flow actually works. So we're gonna be using this one line of, one line of code, flow.plot, and then name it whatever we want. Okay, so now going into the code, we basically have day four. What I've done is I've copied this, pasted it as day five. So the same thing as in day four is now day five, just so you can see the difference. We have the same configuration for the agents and tasks. We have still have our custom tool that we created last video. Now, if you go to the main Python file, this is like we this is how we ran it last time, right? We had a day four crew. We kicked it off the we kicked it off the crew. We gave it the we gave the news the input. What well, this time it was last time it was Meta AI, and it gave us a bunch of news and created the markdown file for us with our custom tool, which allowed a little bit more, which allowed for some more flexibility. But this time we don't need that, right? This is not how we're kicking off the crew this kickoff is gonna be a part of the flow. So I created a new file called my flow. And, you know, I kind of have a lot of the same imports here, except there are some new imports. Obviously we have the crew AI, but we have all the flow imports. What I've done is remember I said, we're going to use state. So to use state th this, the way that I like to use it anyways, is I created another pydantic class just called with one property called news. And I did, I realized I did have to instantiate this to be an empty string. It didn't work without that. And then I created a news flow class, which takes in the news as part of the flow. So this, this news is going to be our state. So the state starts with the news property as an empty string, but we're going to change that. All right. And that, because I do have some open AI calls here, of course, you could also switch this and use your local models. You don't have to do it this way, but this is, um, this is how I'm going to show you. And then we're going to run it and make sure you understand how this works because this is very powerful. So I have, like we saw, like we saw, we have a start method. This is what's going to start the flow. This is where it knows this is the beginning of our flow. So this one, we're going to have open AI generate a news topic instead of, you know, us choosing one. So I'm going to, I just ask you to return a topic within the AI world that is trending. Just make it between one and four words. Okay. So then we take that response and then we return whatever news topic it may be. Maybe, maybe meta AI, maybe open AI, probably open AI, right? Whatever it is, um, this is what's happening. So we have the start method called the generate news topic. It's going to return a topic for us. Then I have a generate news function that is listening for when that generate news topic is done. So when that is done, we want to take that news topic, and now we're, I'm saying, I'm printing out so you can see generating the news with the crew. So this time I'm gonna have the day five crew, the actual crew that we created in the previous videos, we're gonna kick that off here, right? So we can kick off a crew within any of these functions. And this is how you can have multiple crews doing different things. You don't have to have one crew. So we have the same inputs, except the inputs is coming from the previous function where it chose the news topic for us. Then we're gonna kick off the crew. You know, it's gonna, 
It's going to do, do the, super, the custom SERP or dev tool, do the Google search. Then it's going to go ahead and analyze them and give us, give us back uh, an output from that. So two of the agents are still going to work just like the way they did, except we're going to say the output is going to be results.raw. This is an actual property from the output of this. And then we're going to set the state to so self.state.news equal to this output. So this is the actual raw output from the second agent when it return whatever it returns, right? I think it's like be like markdown or that returns is now going to be a part of the news state. Okay, and then this returns the output. So when this this is done, when this function is done, the next one I have one called save news. And this is going to be listening for when the generate news function is done. The one that is going to actually kick off the crew. So whenever that's done, all this is doing is it's going to create a deck directory and then it's going to save the news to the path. So then this news, it's going to take the news from the previous one. Now, either we could get it from the state or because I am returning the output up here, it's just going to take it into the save news. So it's going to come in here. So just create another directory. It'll be um, in your in your source folder called news, and it's going to save that as a markdown file called news.md for markdown. All right. So once that is done, we're not returning anything here. Okay. So we're saying that save the what if this is successful, it'll save the news. But what is this, right? I have a listen function. I have two listening functions for the same function. This one's called generate the best news. Let's just go over this really quick. This one is going to choose the most important news from the input. And then it's just going to return the most important news. So a single, a single news is going to return whatever it thinks is the most important. But how, what's going on here? I have two listeners, different functions, but they're listening to the same function whenever it ends. So again, the generate news function up here is is being whenever it returns the output these two functions save news and generate best news is waiting till that's done however how does this work well you can do it a couple ways it's either sequentially or asynchronously and i have it done sequentially so what's going to happen is this save news whenever generate news is done it's going to then run it's going to do all of this and when this is done it's because generate news was already like it was already done then this generate best news is going to be done or it's going to be executed is going to pick the best news from that list of 10, 20, whatever, uh, whatever our crew actually returns. It's then going to pick the best news from there. So you can have this is going to show you can have more than one function listening for a single function to be done for to return its output. You don't it's not just all one thing after another. You can have multiple functions waiting for a single AI output or LLM output. Then for the last part, I had this other at listener, and this is the conditional logic that I mentioned. I have this and underscore. So this is waiting till the generate news topic, generate news, the save news, and the generate best news. Basically, all the functions that we just went over, it's waiting till all of them are done. And then once they're done, we're going to print out the results and then just say news is complete. And then how this works is you, I just have a main function. I create the news flow or instantiate it. I, this is where we're going to be having the plot, right? So it's going to plot to my flow output as an HTML file. I already kind of have one over here, but this will be updated. And then we just say flow.kickoff. And that's it, right? Everything else I didn't change in any of uh, the agents or the tasks or anything like that. This is just all I did was add functions as a flow instead of adding them directly to the crew. And this is powerful because you don't always need to have an AI agent to do everything, right? If I want to save to the file, let me just save to the file. You don't have to call an AI agent for that. Now let's run this. Okay, so we saved the plot first, you know, before right before we kicked off. So we want to save the plot of this flow, which is then now saved to an HTML file. We started the flow. It the first function, the at start decorator function, it created the topic generative AI models for us to search for with our actual crew. So now we're going to start generating news with our crew. This is the generative AI model senior news researcher. Then we come down here. We have the news researcher using the custom serper dev tool that we did in the last video. So it's returning 20 results. We scroll down. There's 20 of them here. And then it gave us the answer of the 10 that I guess it liked. So then once that was done, it gave us the final answer from the reporting analyst. Then you can see here, we saved the news. So the news was saved to this folder right here, which you can see is created up here in the project, news.md. And then it generated the best news, which was the last function. And then the logger said the most important news from the provided list is, and then gave us 
what it thought was the most important news. Because, if let me bring this back, if we scroll down, the logger, what it said, this is the and. So once all four of these functions were done, it's gonna return the result of the last function. Now the last function was to generate the best news. So this is returning the important news that it, open the I thought was. So it says logger and then result. So if you look right here, it says logger and then the most important news from the list was something about unveiling Microsoft unveiling new healthcare AI models. And like I said, it generated the flow. So let's go ahead and right click this, open live server. And you can see here, this is amazing, right? The, the generate news topic, this was the start because it says at the bottom, it gives you kind of like a diagram, a keys of what's going on. So this is where we had the start function or the start decorator at. So we generate the news topic, which was the generative AI models or whatever. Then it goes to the generate news, which is where we actually kick off the crew. So it actually gives us the news from our custom tooling. Then it saves the news to a markdown file. Then it generates the best news that it thinks from that whole list. And then the logger uh, works. So you can see there's an and trigger. So all these dotted lines from each of these functions. So once the generate news topic is done, the generate news is done, the save news and the generate best news, once all four of them are done, all of them, not just a few of them, all of them, then the logger printed out the result from the best news. This is absolutely amazing so you can see how your workflow is actually working. I hope you can see how the flow structure is really gonna help you create your cruise and your event-driven architecture. With this new added feature, this is gonna really help with your AI agent architecture. All our previous videos are in the description below. In the next video, we're gonna make this a scheduled event and create one more custom tool. In the meantime, here are other videos. I'll see you next one.